morning. All right, so one thing you can do just before I start the introductions is where you see me, and that's where my screen share will be, you can click on the three little dots, the ellipses, and you can pin me. And that way I will be, if you look at people, go to people, if you're not used to being in um, Teams, then at the bottom on the menu bar, when you hover, you'll see an icon next to the hangup receiver, the red receiver. Looks like two little people. They look like those two little Fisher Price people, <laughs> the little bottoms and the heads. Click on that. You'll see everybody here and find me. And then there should be three dots and you can click those three dots to pin me. And then that way my screen will stay at the forefront and not other people's pictures, which will be helpful for you. And if your mic isn't muted, please go and unmute your mics. Uh, I definitely want you to jump in and talk sometimes, but if you're not talking, let's go and mute our mics so that we can have a better um, experience and can hear better that way. You may leave your video open or you may go on and close it. You may have more bandwidth and you might see more clearly if you stop your video, video by just clicking on the camera icon. So hi everyone, I'm glad to have you here today. In my part of the world, it's Friday. I'm in Memphis and it's cloudy today. It looks like it's gonna rain again. We've had quite a bit of rain. Let me go ahead and put my slides up here for you. And then you'll see that, okay. So I'm Julene Reed and we're gonna talk about using Flipgrid to maximize student learning and engagement. And I love, love, love Flipgrid. It's one of my favorite tools. And since Microsoft purchased Flipgrid about, I don't know, the last year, about a year ago, I think, uh, they've really been growing it. So there's some really cool features that didn't used to be there. Uh, so we're going to talk about what it is, why you use it, how you use it, how you set the teacher options. We're going to spend the whole hour digging into Flipgrid. So I hardly have any slides. It's mostly me talking just for a few minutes and then me guiding you through how to use it. So that's kind of our schedule for today. So you don't have to worry about um, just sitting and being bored. You get to be involved and active in your learning, which is always really good. So uh, anyway, I told you I'm in Memphis. I've been in education over 25 years in all grade levels, elementary, all through higher ed, where I, some, I teach courses sometimes, adjunct professor, I'm teaching one now. And then I've been director of academic technology to middle school, high school for we will run to one. It's I think they're on their 20th year now, uh, but I'm a global education consultant now and I love to travel and, and do a lot of global work. So that's a little bit about me. And my name is Julene and you found our session this way. And we're so excited to have Q be a part of this initiative with Microsoft to present free professional learning events with some great speakers. I'm honored to be a part of it. And all the recordings are now posted. Most of them, there's still a few coming along, but as we do them, we send our recordings. They're actually on a YouTube channel, but you can access them through q.org slash Microsoft. And as you're looking at the sessions, and it looks like it's a very finite timeline, know that we are actually adding more every week. So we kind of build them out two weeks or three weeks at a time. They're going to go throughout the summer and hopefully throughout the year. We don't know. I know we're contracted through the summer and then we'll see how it goes after that. Uh, but it's a great opportunity that Q's work really hard with Microsoft to make happen. And we're super excited about it. And I'm super excited to be here with you today. So we're going to jump right into Flipgrid. That's what we're here for. And so um, Flipgrid, you probably have never, you may have used it. You may think it's awesome. Maybe you're wanting to learn more about it. You may hear the buzzwords. I mean, for a long time, I kept seeing sessions on Flipgrid, 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 and I thought, I don't get it. What is it? Uh, and so we're going to learn what it is, how you can use it, how it's effective, how much kids love it. Uh, and you can see some of the, the screens on here. There are lots of ways to do different things, and we're going to talk about those. And then as an educator, we're going to talk about ways that you can kind of control the environment, the opportunities you have to put your information on Flipgrid, and how it can be used to engage your students, but also how it can be used academically. So we're going to go on and just look at kind of the agenda for the next hour. So we're going to talk about what is it, why we why, why use it, how to do it, let's do it, educator options, and then we're going to look at Flipgrid AR. 
so that's a recent addition that's been really awesome. If you ever used Erasma, if any of you ever used Erasma, I used to love Erasma for augmented reality. We did all kinds of things with it. We even had our yearbook with augmented reality. So if you, we had trigger images that weren't QR codes, but you could click on an image and it would play a video. And that's kind of the same idea here. So I'm gonna show you that as well, which is super easy. Uh, so looking at what, you know, the what, why and how, it's a great opportunity for formative assessment. It's a great opportunity or tool for uh, reflection and metacogn metacognition, which is a huge part of learning. Often we don't spend enough time reflecting back on a learning experience with our students and letting them reflect back in many different ways. They can journal, they can talk to peers about what they did, what went what wrong, what went well, how they're going to go forth, what the next steps might be. So it's good for journaling. It's good in this time of the pandemic for social emotional learning. You know, I want to check in with all you guys. I want you just to send me a quick one minute. How are you feeling? What's going on? I just want to make sure you're OK and let them respond on a flip grid. And those can be private or public. So you can moderate them where nobody sees them but you unless you want them to. So if it's an assessment, you don't want them to you know, copy from each other. It could be hidden. And then as you start to review them and find some really good examples, you might want to open some up for others to see, or they can be completely open. And that just depends on your lesson goals and your purpose and your objectives. And then how we're going to talk about. But we talk a lot and I talk a lot about giving students choice, ownership, voice and authenticity, and this gives them a voice. Uh, it's great for foreign language. Think about that, it's great for music. You can play instruments, you can speak in other languages, and you're recording yourselves, or the students are recording themselves. So it really gives them a voice in ways that they're used to be, um, have a voice when um, when they're doing their, their selfies or their TikToks or their Snapchats, you know, all those kinds of things. So we want to make sure we're, we're providing opportunities and choices on how to demonstrate understanding, and this is just one of several that can be used for that. Would you go through and check your mics again? Just make sure they're off. I'm hearing myself coming back to me. So just make sure your mic is off for a little bit. And we'll open them up in a minute and you can talk. So what is a Flipgrid and how is it organized? So when you're doing Flipgrids, think about, I'm gonna switch over and find the mic and turn it off. Hold on just a second. Let me get it turned off for them. Cause I'm here in the right place. There it is, I think I found it. There we go. I think I got it. Oops. Oh, they just, I think they just muted. Let's see if anybody else is something. Sorry about that. Oh, I see one. This might be it right here. There we go. I got it. Yay. <laughs> so back to where we were. Let me go back to my screen uh, with my presenting. I mean, you didn't see what I was doing, but I was doing it. So back to where we were talking about, about the flip grid and talking about um, you know, how we can use that for choice of voice and how it's organized. So Flipgrid, what you think of with Flipgrid is it is a grid, the word grid or the term that they're using is a, a topic, I mean a class. Think of your history period one, your math, your art, your biology, music, any bigger element like that. So that would be your class and you can have multiple grids. So you may have history period one, period two, or block A, block B, and each grid could be different. And then your topics would be, okay, so maybe I teach, maybe this is second grade. I'm even bringing it down a little here. And I teach self-contained. So I may have a topic on um, second grade math. Oh, I love that, constantly use our, is it Nia? Nia uses it with her um, sign language. Sorry, that just caught my attention. I love that. So um, I will stop chasing rabbits and talk to you. So think about how you would organize this. And a, a grid could be a topic. It doesn't have to be a class. But within that bigger envelope, that bigger structure, that enclosing structure of a grid, then you have topics. So a flip grid could be um, environmental science, and within that you have extreme weather, hurricanes, tornadoes, all these different topics you're studying. And in math and algebra, you might have tessellations of, or geometry, you might have tessellations in one, you might have um, equilateral triangles as a topic, whatever. 
or if you prefer, you can organize it, the grid by the topics with the little lessons or the units underneath it. So it's whatever works for you, you know, whatever works for you. So this is the grid. And then down here are my topics on the bottom. So this is one of many. So let me take you and show you. Not there. Let me take you live and show you another window so you can kind of see how mine are organized. And then I'm going to have you actually go into one. So if I go, let me find it right here. You can set, there we go. So these are my grids. So you're seeing this is my flip grid and, and these are my grids. So I have all these great grids here. And within each grid, I have topics. So let's look at one I just made for training purposes. It always comes with a check-in where I introduce yourself. So I have sustainable development goals. I have a couple on those. It's the climate changing, environmental issues, and these are just for training, so they don't really have any content. But you have all these different grids, I mean, these different topics within a grid. And then when I go back to my grids, I see like algebra period four. This one's a topic on the solar system rather than a class. So you just design it Spanish period, Spanish one, second period. You design how you want, and you, you can copy things over. So if you have several sections, you don't have to um, keep repeating everything. You can share that topic among your sections. So that's kind of what it looks like. So let me go back to my presentation again and tell you what I want you to do next. I want you to open a browser window. And in your browser window, I want you to go to flipgrid.com. And I do not want you to log in. So do not log in. I want you to be a student. So all you're going to do is use a code. And you can go to the Q Microsoft, but you can also just go to flipgrid.com. And on the bottom here, you see enter a flip code or at the top by that one arrow, you see enter a flip code. So those are two ways you can get in. No login, you're right in. You go with a flip code, kids can join by a code, either um, just by doing enter a flip code. They can also have a QR code pasted here that you can give them if they have devices that would scan a QR code. And then right here is another way where you could give them a link. That link actually goes to the channel, I mean to the grid, and I'm going to take you in instead. Hopefully you're ending up either here. Whoops, not that. One. Yes. Yeah, that one. I'm trying to think which one it was. Either you're going to end up here or you're going to right in here. And this is where I want you to end up. So if you're having trouble getting there, open your mic and tell me or put it in the chat. Otherwise, I hope everybody's getting to flipgrid.com. Let me um, Put the link back up there for you again, the flip code, just in case you need it. Get it right here. I think I get it. There we go. There it is. If you need it, it's taking a second to come through, I think, but it should come through. You know what? Let me just put the link in the um, chat. That would be the easiest thing to do for you. And then you'll have it. So let me know in the chat if you've if you've made it there, if anybody's having trouble either way. I'm gonna assume you're there. If you're having trouble, let me know if you need the, the link again. And I'm gonna put in the chat for you. Julie, you and your screen didn't change. So we're still seeing your screen that has the link and the code on it. So that's really you, when you reference so. us looking for okay. something else. You're yeah, not let seeing me do it again. Let me just that. stop. Thank you for telling me. Let me stop and do it again. How about there? Sometimes it doesn't keep up. There we go. Is that what you want to see? So you're either going to see this. If you didn't see that and you came into this, this is the same thing. Flipgrid Q events. And then just go down here to distance learning strategies. And this is where you should be. Now yours is going to look a little different. I'm going to take you in as a student on my screen. When I hit view, this is what you actually should be seeing. Flipgrid Q events. You should see me in a big green plus. Uh, <laughs> OK, you don't have you don't have to enter it right now. Uh, and you got the wrong code. So let me get you the code. 
can go back here and get it for you. No, I'm good. You I'm got good. it? I found it. Yeah. Okay, good. All righty. So I want to share this with you. I want to share something with you. There, I didn't. Okay. You didn't get didn't. the code? Let me get the code for you. I'm going to get on my other computer here and get it. And see if I, oh, let me just grab it here. It's right here. It's this one here. Actually, I'll just copy the whole thing. And I'm going to put it in chat for you right now. We'll get us in there. All right, now let me get you in chat. Let me find the chat. And let me put it in there. <laughs> this is where I want you to be. And it should look like this. As a student. Let me go back to it. So as a student, whoops, let me go back. Let's go for it again. Yeah, let me find it. Give me what this. There we go. So you should see this. This is learning strategies. Did anybody need a password? I do. I do. I do too. Everybody's needing a password. That's really weird. Okay, let me look at that because you shouldn't need a password. It should take you straight in. Did anybody get in without a password? Nobody come without it? Well, let's figure this one out because what it should do right now is take you straight in. So let me go to my settings. Let me go back to my grid. And you look here, distance learning, recording time. That's really odd because I haven't set it to be public. But let me see. You're getting the back end side here. So, and nobody got in without it. That's really odd because I did this yesterday. Nobody had to have a password. Attachments must be it in the topic. Yeah, I've never had that happen before. Okay, let's do this. Go back and try one other one. Let's try the one that worked yesterday just for the heck of it, because that makes me look at share. Share, copy. It's a, mm, this is strange. Let me just search it. Flip grid. Get to watch me search because I've never had that happen. You can go on if not, but I just want to see it. But you won't need it for what you're doing. Oh, that's not what I want. Password to all grids this morning. They made an update to accounts and they're protecting them. Isn't that lovely? <laughs> So they will need a password to enter in blue grid. Okay, so here's where I can paint it. Don't we love it when they do things like this, when they upgrade things? Okay, let's see. Um, I had a quick observation. Yeah. Uh, when you showed us the code on your presentation, that was a different code than what was presented in the chat. Oh, so you don't know maybe grid. that's the issue. Let me look at that. Yeah, that might be good. That you know, what I happened, have this. and I can tell you why that happened, which is not helping you right now, but my computer crashed in the middle of something today and it lost some things and I bet it didn't keep it. So let's do this back up and let's go back and see what happens if you use this code. It was like six, it was six D A eight B two six two. Yeah, I'm going to get it for you right here. Uh -huh. Share. All right. Try this one. That's the one we just had. Yeah. And that doesn't work. No. Correct. Okay. I'll do this. Let's do it the other way then. Let's do um, this one worked yesterday. Let's see what this one does. Let's see if we can get in here because it'll be fine for what we're doing. Uh, let me find this one again. Let me give you this code. Try this one. 14C. I'll type it over here on my other computer. 4C. 9D. 
see if that doesn't work. It's a, a, a an issue with Flipgrid because I used this one yesterday or the day before, and I had a video. Can that I just one. interrupt for one second? Sure. That one asks for a password as well for me, but the original one that's on your slideshow that has words as the code, like where you type it in after, that mm -hmm. one let me into a grid that says, think of a silver lining, and I didn't need a password for that one. So if you go back to your presentation. <laughs> what in the world, right? <laughs> Don't you love it? Okay, let me find this. Let's see where that, let's see where that one is. So if you look at that one, and what is your silver lining? It's not this one though. No. Um, do you have a code on it? 6D88B262. That one's what she posted in chat. Right, yeah, do that one. Let's just skip it. Let's go to that one. Let's let you go to that one. I'll find it too. Thank you. I have no idea. Nothing was done any differently. So I have no idea why that happened. But as long as we get there and that won't stop us from what we're doing. But Can you put out that six code again? Um, yeah. If, if you look in the chat, there's a whole there's a whole link to it in the chat. So let me show you in the chat right now. Go there and thank you to Laurel. Laurel's always having my back. There it is right there. What is the silver lining? I have no idea. And we did that the other day and I did nothing different. So I have no idea. Yay. So woo. Now, you're seeing, are we all seeing that with that link in the, yeah, curveballs for sure, on a Friday, yay. Um, so are we seeing that one okay? Yes, Tom, I have no idea what happened. <laughs> it's like I did nothing different. So there's something going on crazy with Flipgrid because you don't ever usually have to ever do that. All right, we got each other's back, thank you. All right, back to Flipgrid now. So as a student, and it's still in the, it's still in the chat if you need it, as a student, you will come in and you can do this two ways. You can give your students at the beginning of the year the whole grid, just one code for the grid, and then they will always go in and pick the topic that they're responding to. Or some teachers like to send it out a topic code at a time. So either way is fine. You can do it either way. And then when students get here, they'll see a prompt. So this is the prompt. What is the silver lining you've had with your students during this time of distance learning? So what they will do, and these are others that have been here. So this was not moderated, and this was done on Memorial Day because I had on my Chicago uh, shirt that time that was Memorial Day. Um, so what um, what they see, what you see is how other people have responded. So we could click and watch them. We could put a response back. We can like them. It just depends on our settings, which we're going to look at in a little bit. But what I want you to do now is go through the process of being a student and doing a quick response. So we're going to click on the plus. I'm going to quit my camera for a second because it won't like it if I do my camera at the same time. So I have to stop my camera, which won't affect what you're seeing. Uh, and then we're going to click on this plus because that's how students will respond. It's gonna ask you either to log in with your Google or log in with your Microsoft, either one is fine, whichever one works for you. And then you're successful and you're going to get your screen. You know, part of, it doesn't let you record if you're not logged in is what you're saying. I think that depends on whether you clicked educator sign in or logged in. That makes a difference too, because you usually can record if you're not logged in. These people weren't, I don't think were logged in when they did it, but cost, maybe you're right. Yeah, I don't think so. Uh, I'll check it more. So here we are. This is our Flipgrid screen and about three months ago, they changed the format of it. All these tools on the bottom used to be on the side, but it's much more accessible here so they really they're very responsive if you have a question they always answer uh, right away with a, a really quick time turnaround and they are responsive to our requests so we're going to look at these things but first um, i just want you to see the bottom so on the bottom we have the record button you can't see my screen and i'm seeing it on my monitor is anybody else seeing the support the screen Okay, let me turn my skin. Let me just turn mine off. Yeah, you see it. Lisa sees it. Patty sees it. So make sure you've clicked on, um, make sure that you've pinned me. So find me as the presenter. Yeah, good. Okay, you found me. Good. 
Yeah, we get lost. We're getting lost together. So what you're going to do then, this is your camera, how you record. And every time you record, you no worries, Laura. Laura every time you record, you can um, either have your face for children that are not comfortable or under some kind of custody protection or something and they're shy or they're shy and not used to it, they'll get used to it. They're used to doing selfies. It just takes a little practice, but they can also put a sticker or an emoji on their face. So there's all kinds of options. So I'm going to go across the bottom and you can play with them as we're going as a, as a student before we become teachers. So here's filters. So I can put different types of filters. I can blur myself, which is another option for kids that don't really want to be seen. I can make myself all different colors or I can go back to the clear filters. So that's what filters are. The next thing I have an option for doing is text. So I can write text on top of my screen. So I can get a little text box and I can put it here and I can start typing on my screen and I can pick the color and I can't even put my own name. OK, not that I would put that, but there I am. And then I can move it where I want and resize it. So I can put text on my screen. And like I said, I can also use selfies or stickers and they updated a bunch of these. They have thousands and they updated them with some arrows recently. So I have regular emojis, all kinds of emojis. I have people on the bottom here. I can go across the bottom again. I have all kinds of cool shades and things that I can put on myself. I have reactions that I could put. I have magic I can do. The other nice thing is I can search. So maybe I'm doing something on environmental sustainability. That's just my sample and I want to put the earth here. So I could put the earth up here. I could also, like I said, if I don't want to show my face, I could put something on my face and just stretch it out and then kids wouldn't have to have their faces shown. I'm going to delete this though. So you have emojis and stickers, which your kids like. You can draw. So as a teacher or a student, they could even work a problem. So if they have this, they can pick their color. When you pick, pick the draw option, they can annotate on it anywhere they want to. Uh, let's see what I can do today. There we go. And if you have an interactive touch screen and a stylus, yeah, you can do all kinds of great things with the drawing too. But on top of that, as an educator, I have a whiteboard. So I can do a blackboard or I can do a whiteboard. And I think of this as like maybe I want to write a problem out. We're going to work a problem. Three times x well y equals i don't know nine i don't know and you could show them if you had a stylus it would be much easier show them how to work a problem and be recording it they could show you their work and be recording it uh, so lots of ways you can use that i'm going to go up here i'm going to actually clear that because that will stay on my screen i can record and do it and i'll record and then i can clear it and it'll still be recording and come right back to me again. I didn't clear it, obviously. Let me go back and see if I can clear it. Might be too late. Nope, there we go. Clear. There we go. All right, so you'll want to clear it before you come back to you, probably, unless you want a math problem on your face. And then I also have the photo sticker. So what's cool about the photo sticker, what's extra cool about it, is you can put images up here. Maybe it's a painting and you're describing it. Uh, in an art class or maybe and I have no idea what I have on this class on this desktop um, on this computer but I'll look uh, but any kind of image that might come up you can put here here's a sketch pad image I have no idea what it is it was probably just a practice uh, so I can resize that and put it to the side so maybe this is my work maybe this is my project or some work I've done and I want to have it up here while I'm talking to it. So I could have a poster, I could have anything, and it can be in the corner while I'm recording. And then, yeah, uh, well, you don't have to, you'd be amazed. Sorry, it can be in the corner when I'm recording, and then, um, and then it's there for the student to discuss and reflect on their work. 
I have to quit looking at the chat, don't I? I keep talking. Um, yeah, and I was going to tell you, some of you said you need a touchpad, but I've seen amazing work done in OneNotes with um, the track trackpad by, or a mouse by middle school students that were incredible. So I think it just says us getting used to it and figuring out if you're using a mouse or what. So those are your bottom controls at the top. If you're responding to a topic and you don't remember what the, the topic was that you're responding to, you can click this little notebook. What is the silver lining you've had with your students during this time of distance learning? So that is something that I can look at and have, you know, go, oh yeah, that's what my topic is. Another thing that you can turn on or off for your students is I can add a sticky note. Now the sticky note when I record won't be seen. So a student could put notes here and could record with their notes there that would kind of help guide them through their recording, uh, but they don't have to, you would just type on them. And you can, as a teacher, you can have those accessible or not accessible. So lots of options there. And then down the three, three dots down here, let me go back again so you'll see because I move quickly. On the left of my camera, these three dots are video options. This is new, it's in beta. I can do some screen recordings here and my, my video will be in the corner while I'm doing my screen recording. Uh, and I'm just gonna show you this really quickly. I'm gonna go here, I'm gonna start my, cause I kind of prepped for this. So I'm gonna start my screen recording and I'm gonna go over here and I know that I can edit this, so it's not a problem. This is my Microsoft whiteboard in another tab. So now I can actually do this. And then I can come back to my Flipgrid and I can quit it. If I can remember which one I'm in, I don't know which one I'm in. Where I'm recording. Too many windows. But then I would just stop the recording. Oh my goodness, you're right. No. And that would be my um, Flipgrid recording response that I could do. Um, where in the world did you link go? That's a really good question. So, Maybe the one with the red dot. Oh, you know what? Wouldn't that be good? There we are. And then I stop my recording. So that would be it then. So now I can share my screen and I've done it. It didn't really do it though, did it? I don't know why it didn't work, but it does work. I think it's just I'm blowing you up. Try again. Oh, I'm, I'm not allowing permissions. Start screen recording. Where are my, I don't know where my permissions are, but you get the idea. And it worked this morning just fine. I tested it before I came on with you, so I don't know what in the world's going on. We'll try it one more time. Start screen recording. We're going to record anything. We don't care. We're just going to move this around. Yeah, it's a screen recording issue. It's a permission issue. It's not letting me. So anyway, you can do that. And that is new. And that's working in um, beta right now. Leave the site. That's fine. Working in beta right now. And so that's really, you know, an, a good tool for you to start using when you are broadcasting at the same time. And so those are all there for you. You have all those tools across the bottom for the students and you're going to want to guide them. You have one minute to record your video. Okay. Uh, I set this for you at one minute. So what this means is as a teacher, you can decide how long you want the students to be able to record. It can be 30 seconds, 45 seconds, a minute. You'll see all the options. As a teacher, when you're teaching, you have up to 10 minutes to record. So you can record when you're teaching. So that's pretty much the screen here. You can switch cameras. You can upload things here. I'm just going to go through the process now, and I want you to make a recording too. So I'm going to click on the camera. It's going to count me down. And I'm going to say my silver lining has been that I've had time to do some projects. I actually took my grandfather's 100 year old Hoosier and completely refinished it. And it's in the garage done and ready to go upstairs in a bedroom. I will pause it then. I have an option to redo it if I want to, or I can go on to next. And that's going to play. And so that's my first video. This is new. I can add more now. So maybe that's my introduction. And now I'm going to record the whiteboard drawing a picture. So, or whatever. So I'm just going to go to the whiteboard real fast, do white, get a um, pink, and I'll pretend like I'm doing a math problem, but we'll draw a heart. I'm going to stop and I get a next. 
So now, if you see, I have two different clips. I have this one, and then I have over here where I'm drawing the picture too. Okay. So I have two options here, and I here's my picture. Come on. So if I move this on down, there's my heart coming in. You can see it come in. I can trim it. If I click on it, I can pull the ends in and trim it off. I can also take the two different ones and I can move them around. So I have lots of editing potential. So maybe I want the heart to come first. I can switch them around. So they've added some real editing potential in here and you can do lots of new things. Then I go to next again. The one thing that this does, yes and, you can turn it off in the teacher settings. It takes a selfie of you at the end. And that's like your screenshot, your thumbnail that will appear with your um, with your video. So I can smile, take my selfie. If I don't like it, I can redo it. And then I just go to next. Now it processes. It's going through the, the process. I can give it my name, put my name there. I can title it. I can give it a link if I have to have a link somewhere to another document or something. And then I can submit it. And it congratulates me. It gives me my code if I want to share it. So I can share it outside, you know, to other people with that code. And there I am. There's my response. So that's the kind of thing I want you to do now. I want you to go do it in there in the one that we're doing with the silver linings. So go on and do your silver lining one uh, and then we'll see how you do. Take a minute and do a quick recording and save it and then we'll see how you pop in. A lot of you are already coming in. Is Nia, Patty, well, some of these were there before, but I think Nia and Patty are new. Yep. So as a teacher, I can see all of these here. So Nia, do you care if I click on yours? Okay, just wanted to make sure there's some more. She has a crown. I love your crown, your mermaid, and your, <laughs> your glasses. So I can toggle back and forth this way too and keep going to everybody and seeing their views. Uh, I don't know where Nia went. I was going to comment on her. So there she is. I can now reply. And as a reply, I can just quickly say something to Nia then and share that information with her. So we'll hold it. It's like, Nia, that was a great response. I loved it. And I love the way you decorated your screen, too. So I just go next. Selfie. Next. And now I submit the video. And if I look at Nia's, you should see me underneath it. See right here how I am now popping up under her. That shows that I've responded to her. And then when I go here, and I, I can see here in this top that I've responded to her. So lots of ways, y'all are doing a great job. Look at us coming in, keep going, throwing one in there. And so I think learning to just do it, which it should have worked like that the first time, that'll be my afternoon project to figure out what in the heck went wrong. But um, then I can make a slideshow of it if I want, I can share them if I want or whatever. So that's a basic format of what it is and how you use it. My sound's not coming through when I share my screen. Is anybody else having trouble with sound? You put in the chat? No? Okay. I don't know, Nia. Try again. Um, so it may be because I was playing the video. I don't know. But I think everybody else has got it. So, um, so yeah. So there are lots of great ways to do this. This little icon, I uploaded that. So you can upload anything you want to, and you can tell that's a, I think that's a good, if you look at it. Uh, but then you have these to look at. So I want you to go in as a teacher. We're going to switch gears here because I want you to see what it looks like to be a teacher. And I want you to stop for a second and think, what is one I could make now? Um, you can just make one for fun if you want to, if you'd rather. Just make it for fun. But you could also be making, think of the top of the grid. Think of your big idea grid and what is something you could do right now in your grid. 
So I'm going to stop this screen share and I am going to instead share my PowerPoint for a minute to see what I want you to do. Okay. And let's go to the PowerPoint right here. So what I want you to do next now, we, we didn't log in last time. Now I want you to log in. So go back to flipgrid.com and I want you to go to either one of these two places to be, oh, when you view the video, there was no sound, sorry. Once you go to either two of these places to have the educator sign up. So do the educator login. If you've never made an account, it may ask for a couple things, but I want you to make an account if you don't have one. If you do have one, go ahead and log in either way. And we are going to be working now on what it's like for you to go in and create one. So we're gonna create one together which will be just one second. Let me go back to my other share. So now we're going here and I want you to have a whole new window. So I think I have one open for you that I opened earlier. Let me close some of these and that will help. Might be way back here. There, there we go. So you're here, you're gonna log in. And you may be empty here. There'll be nothing here, maybe. Presenter can click on the screen, share audio at the top of their screen, okay. So we're gonna make a grid. What I want you to do is go to add new grid. Click on add new grid. And I want you to think what grid you wanna make today. And if you wanna just make a practice, call it practice. I don't care. But if you wanna make a real one, think of a real one you could make and use with students. So I'm just going to put Q fun. Uh, and this is the trick. And this could be what I did, but I didn't think I did because I that other one was used. You can use the school email. That could be the delineator. So I'm going to have to make sure. You can use a student ID, not just for EDU. And oh, not just not for Europe. That's what it means. You can't have it for Europe. Educator Learning Community. This is the public one, and maybe I hit the school email. That would be my mistake. So Educator Learning Community is what you want to be public. However, if your kids have emails, then they need to do that. And this creates a flip code. This is for all your flips, you know, for this grid. Everything, every topic you put in this grid will have this specific code. So you can edit this. If you don't want to send out a link to every topic that they respond to one at a time, which some people would rather, they don't really need to see everything. They just want to see that one topic so they don't get lost in the whole grid of all the topics. Then I could say that I want this grid called Q Fun. I want this to be called Julian Fun or read fun or whatever. So you can give it a custom name so kids will always know where your grid is. They don't have to find a topic, but just go, oh, go to my grid and today I want you to do this topic. So whichever is your better workflow works. So now I just click next and I can add a password, which I did not. So I think I must have hit the, the school. Uh, and then click next again. Here is my new grid password. So to get to my whole grid with all the topics, I have one password. And looky here, I can embed it, I can send it out in Teams, I can send it out in Google Classroom, I can share it on my mind, I can copy it and paste it anywhere I want to. And then I want you to go to your grid. Yes, Mia, it can be added in your as a tab in your Teams group if you're using Teams, good point. So here's my grid now. And I'll have my say hello on Flipgrid. First thing you're going to look at is I don't want this little icon, this little thing up here. So you will be able to edit that in a minute. You have your code here. So I can look at my code and this is what a student looks like. It's going to take me to view as a student. There's my code. I can add a co-teacher, which is really nice. So if you have a collaborator that you're working with, you can add a co-teacher. I can share this. If I want to share that, that takes me back to this screen where I can copy of it. I could have a QR code on the wall for younger kids that had iPads or something. I can go to the actions. I can edit the grid here. I can add co-pilots, all the same things. I can duplicate it, which is really nice. I can get notification. Here's my team's integration. I can export data from it, all these things. 
I can also just click edit and get there quickly. So the other thing I can do now is start making my topics and then I'm going to take you into the teacher mode. So I can add a new topic. So let's add one topic of our own. So I'm going to talk about um, board games. So there's board games. And then I'm going to add a question. What's your favorite board game? And this is where I can choose how long I want those recordings to be. Do I want to do 15, 30 seconds, all the way up to 10 minutes? I will tell you 10 minutes could be painful if you're watching them all. I always try to keep it down to a shorter level, depending on what the purpose of that specific task or prompt is. So yes, you can delete grids. So keep it down to a you know a smaller amount of time, but not so little that they'll be nervous. So it just is like, it's a quick check-in, how you feeling today, a minute. This is a great way to say, tell me if what you, any questions about last night's reading, or I want you to give me a quick overview of the chapter you read last night with blah, blah, blah. You know, so you can do it as a, a bell ringer kind of thing, an exit ticket, you know, anything you want to be able to use this. It's great for social emotional. Video moderation is right here. This is where you would turn off moderation or turn it on. So what that means is you could see each other's videos right away. However, you may not want to. You may not want the students to see each other, so that would be moderation. That video you saw of me a while ago and this one, distance learning strategies, this is a focus. A focus can be lots of things. So a focus could be a video. I'm trying to find here's um, this is a YouTube video that I made for a spaghetti uh, art class. So that's a YouTube video. There's another one I have that is actually an image of a painting, if I can find my painting class, visual arts. And so in this one, it has an impressionism image. So you can make your focus be whatever you want it to be, or you don't have to have one. That's up to you. And you can come back and edit later. So you can record a video of yourself, like I did this morning. You can upload a video. You can do YouTube and Vimeo upload an image and an emoji, but look how it ties right into Microsoft, ties right into Google, Kahoot, Wakelet, Nearpod, all these other things too. So you have those options as well. So you just create your topic, however you do have a few more options down here. You can give them a topic tip. You can give them attachments. You can make topics frozen, hidden, or active. You can put launch and freeze dates. And this is where you can set up selfies only, videos only, or selfies and videos. And then you have a video title if you want it, a view count, if you want them to know how many people viewed it, sticky notes that people can add when they're recording, like I did, I showed you you could do to have your prompts. Um, video editing, do you want them to go trim and rearrange or edit their video clips? Uh, attachment links, all these different things. Likes, do I want them to all like each other? This is, can you reply to another student? Like I replied a minute ago to the one that was up there. Can I reply? Or do I don't want them to reply to each other? So you have all these different prompts you can do. So I'm going to create this. There's my share. Now this is a different code because this is specific to this topic. The other code was our whole grid, the big picture. So you kind of get the idea of how you set it up as a student. Let me see if I have any questions. Yeah, it can be added in Teams. You can delete grids, yes. And I, I, I'll show you where that is. And yes, in the edit mode at the bottom of the list of, okay, so she's already got you there, the bottom list of options. There's a couple ways to delete them. I'll show you another way too. If moderation is on, can we allow videos to go public? Yes. So you would go back in as a teacher and they would all show up in the, the teacher mode and you would just click each one and say to make it public. You might be able to do a batch of them, but they'll come in, they won't see each other's, but then they can be public. So that's easy to do. Um, let's go back here. Let's go to my grids. My grids at the top. Um, so here's my grids. And if I wanted to actually delete this one, I can just go right there to actions. And at the bottom it says delete grid. So that's where I can delete it if I don't want it. That's how it works from your standpoint. One thing I absolutely want to show you here, because there's a lot to explore, and I want to show you a few more things, is Disco Library. 
So Disco Library, you will love, love, love. These are lessons that are already made by other educators and you can search them. And then you can borrow those same ideas. So if I'm doing um, middle school and we'll just keep with the same kind of thing, I can pick a topic. Maybe I'm gonna just do science and maybe I'm gonna look for climate. And I can search for those. So now here are some other people have made with grade levels. It tells me how long their shared learning experience was. Well, this is just a minute. That's good. I wouldn't want a six and a half minute probably. I wouldn't want an eight. But I can see how many responses are there. I can see how it worked for them. So is the climate changing? They've provided this prompt with an image and information. Uh, and notice right here, this is immersive reader. So I can actually play, have it play what that text says. And that's part of the accessibility. <laughs> so that's part of my accessibility later today is talking about that. But I can add this topic now. If I like this one, I can go to in my environmental sustainability. And this tells me about it. I can add it and then I can edit it as much as I want once it's there. So I just brought in her topic. So I don't have to think of everything. As a teacher, I'm really good at borrowing bulletin boards and everything else. Why not borrow a few other things? So that disco library is really super. I love the disco library right up there with lots of different things that you can get and use. Um, and let me show you my last slide and then we'll open it up for questions or if you want me to show you something else. So let me go back here, stop that and share my PowerPoint one more time. It's not my last slide, but it's almost my last slide. So this is also something that you can kind of look at um, and I don't mind sending you my slides if you want them, but you can just look at this and it's like, this is kind of a hyperdoc for how to learn Flipgrid. Create an account, sign in, create a grid, create a topic, you've already done it. Customize the recording for a prompt if you want to. Uh, and then if Jeline had done her work, she would have tested it this morning, right? And then advanced users, explore the new announcements, click a topic with a side-by-side -side image, which we already did. And now they have the new things, like I showed you the um, screen recording. And the other thing I wanna show you that I really love is augmented reality. And I don't know if you've seen this, and I saw someone say they were really sad when Erasmus went away, but it is really, um, Awesome. And if you're not sure what augmented reality is, you may not be able to hear this because I, I know you had trouble before hearing, but let me just play it and I can in it, I can describe it. So you make your flip grid. Right. And so this is a phone. They've installed the Flipgrid app. And then all you have to do is get that QR code for the flip go kit. Flipgrid that you want to share. And this is what they'll do. They'll scan the QR code. And instantly that Flipgrid video will show up. So that is so cool because now you can do that with your um, I just go back so we don't pause it. So you can do that with your phone if you just put if you put the app on your phone or if parents have the app on their phones, then all you have to do in Flipgrid is when you hit that share button, when there's a topic or whatever you want, like Suzy Q did an awesome video and I want to put it about her art. Here's her art project. Now I'm going to put the QR code from her Flipgrid response about a reflection on her R project. So she'll do the reflection on her R project in Flipgrid. I'll go to that specific response, get a QR code to share it, and then I'll put that QR code next to her artwork. And her parents will then come in, or visitors, and they'll use the scan. And this is what your app interface looks like. You can enter a flip code or you can just scan it. So they'll just I'm hit not that. seeing your That's screen. 
Just I'm your not, phone. I'm seeing it. Are you guys seeing it? I'm seeing it on my monitor. It just shows your phone screen again. Yeah, it's showing the video. Yeah, it's on the right of the video there. It's on the right of the video. Let me look at my camera saying, but it is on the right of the video. Do you see that little screenshot on the right of my video? Let me look at my camera. Yeah, I don't know why it's switching back like that with my camera, but it did. You're right about that. However, on my screen share, you should see, let me just get it where you can see it better. Um, let me go back to this. Let me go share. And let me just do desktop. And we'll do this one. So now here's my messy desktop. Okay. So now over here on the right, oops, let me go back. On the right, let me escape out the slideshow and go down here and show you. It is right here. This one right here. Do you see this screen here? This is like the window of your phone. When your phone opens, it will see the first screen you see will be in our flip code, educator dashboard to log in or scan a code. And all parents have to do is click this and then instantly they will have um, the video pop up. So let me just show you what my app looks like on here and you'll see it on my phone. So this is my phone. Let me see if I can get it where you can see it. I can't tell where I am. Let me just take it off presenter mode. And then I can tell where I am. Come back. Hold on. This is when I do need that um, other method. Are you seeing me right now? No, no, we just see that you're. Alrighty. I had a feeling something crazy was going on right there. Yes and no <laughs> at the same time. All right, let me go look again. Let me just go look again. I don't know what's going on with this camera. Oh, you know why? Because I turned my camera off a while ago, remember? So I was showing you the screen. So there's my phone. And that's all it looks like. That's the Flipgrid app. And I see scan Flipgrid for the very first one. And when I do that and touch it, now it's looking for the QR code. So that's all it is. That's all, you know, it's no trouble at all to do that. That's all it is for Flipgrid. So that's, you know, I just wanted to walk you through today. It was kind of informal, but I just really didn't want to talk to you about it. I wanted you to get and do it and see the options and the opportunities you could use for it. Uh, and I love, uh, when I had Erasma, I loved it. And so if you've never done that before for open houses, um, for anything you post on a bulletin board, you could get their video, they record it, you just print out that QR code, put it right next to it, and people can come up and scan and hear them talk about it, which is awesome. Um, oh, yeah, you're right. They could just use their phone camera. That's interesting. I hadn't thought about that, Patty, but you're probably right. Any, any questions or anything else you'd like me to show you? Any ideas? So who had an idea or who's done something with Flipgrid that they'd like to share with us? What's something you've done that you can share with us that would be awesome? Like I told you with Erasma, which would be a little different, but you could maybe do that. With Erasma, I used um, the yearbook and we you could we had actually an insert because yearbook had to go to press early. And then when the yearbook staff sent the press the yearbook to press early, that's when they came back and worked on the QR codes. I mean, I mean, the augmented reality for everything. So, and then they had an insert that it the, adheres to the to the yearbooks. So there's lots of ways. Now that's when we were using trigger images, which is just as QR codes, so it's a little different. But you can think about that. And Erasmus, you could double click and lock the video so you didn't stay on the target image. That's really cool. I don't know that it does that. I haven't tried that. I need to try that. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You know, the thing I love about, I'm looking at your chats and open your mics and talk. Uh, the thing I love about this is that it gives kids the opportunity to express themselves in different ways. They're getting to talk. It's great for foreign language. It's great for, as one said, their sign language. Uh, for children with disabilities that may not be able to, you know, special ed, I IED kids, they may not be able to perform well in other ways, but they can share their image and tell their learning here. 
uh, and music, you know, music performances. Just think outside the box. There's a million ways you can use this. Anybody I else? Use this, I, was gonna say, I use this for science when they have to do their justification for whatever they've created or whatever their thinking is. So this way they don't necessarily have to raise their hand and tell me. They can tell, you know, how this is sedimentary rock. And then the other kids will comment back on it, stating, yeah, you did a great job. I make them comment on it, hopefully something positive. Mm -hmm. And then they have to ask a question. Why did you choose cracker crumbs for? Oh, I love that. So, so yeah, I see all great the new opportunity things for peer done. review. That's peer review and that's keeping that connection. You know, we talk a lot about in this distance learning age, how do we keep those relationships and connections going? So that's one more way to do that. That's awesome. I love that. Yeah, there are a lot of features and honestly, the more I do it and learn it because I had to do it, I had to develop a course for Verizon and Digital Promise on Flipgrid. Uh, so you would think I wouldn't have made a mistake today, but you know it goes. But um, but anyway, there are, the more I did it, I was like, I didn't know it did that. I didn't know it did that. And then as soon as I got the course created, they released screen recording, they released um, augmented reality and I was like okay now we have to go back and redo half these recordings <laughs> all the icons move from the side to the bottom um, so they're always working they're always doing things to, to improve it and they really listen to us and listen to what our needs are and what our wishes are you know what kinds of things we'd like so it's great it's a great program it's a great company and um, since Microsoft bought it and took it over it's even gotten better so and kids love it and this, the shy ones, they can blur their faces. They can um, put an emoji on until they get used to it. And I think when they see all their friends and their other students doing it, that'll change. So think about this too for um, asynchronous learning experiences and synchronous. You know, I think it's more difficult for, for synchronous if we're doing this. I wouldn't do that. I would do it mostly for asynchronous experiences. Uh, but if you're in a classroom, that would be a different situation. They wouldn't be... If we go back, we're doing blended learning and things. There might be times where you have everybody stop and they can learn to talk to their their mic quietly. But there are lots of ways to use it, so I think it's very creative and just you know think outside the box and use it with in a way that works for you. Um, you know, I do think you have to set up some expectations for this, but they have to also know that um, that it's recorded and you see it. So the stickers and, you know, I love the one we pulled up that was awesome with the stickers and things. And, and I think at first, let them do it for fun. And I think that social emotional connection, you know, what is your silver lining would be a good question for them. Or tell me how you're feeling about everything right now. You know, let me know if you have any issues or if you're feeling good. Just do a quick 30 second, you know, touch base. Uh, and it's a great way for you to give feedback. What an awesome quick feedback thing. And if you have your app, you should be able to give it on your app when you're walking or something. So think of it up for your feedback too. Uh, but I do think you have to set some norms. So it's a formal project, probably not emojis. You know, it's it just depends on what the project is. But starting with something fun is good, and then getting them to the more formal aspect of it. Someone asked about this. The I saw this earlier and didn't address it. I did. I didn't chase every squirrel that ran by in chat, but I chased several trying to help you. But someone asked me about the certificates. And if you email me, and I, I'll put my email back here on the screen for you. If you email me, I will definitely send you the certificates so that you, um, we were just developing them. And let me just put this back in presentation mode so you'll see it better. Still having recordings coming up. Thank you from me. And then here's my email down there. Hold it, it's coming. It's just slow. There it goes. So and I'll put in the chat too on my other one. There you go. So um, email me if you want anything and stay in touch. I'd love to help you and, and just explore and play with it. It's super fun. I mean, it really is a fun thing and the kids love it, but it can also be a very authentic, engaging and motivating um, educational tool that has great a value for learning objectives. So Kind of look at it both ways. All righty. Any other questions? Or any other tips? 
All right. Well, thank you all for coming. Have an awesome weekend. And maybe I'll see you on one of the future ones coming up. Yeah, I, I'm doing accessibility at, let me see what time it is. It's free. Okay, sure. I'll keep them all free. Free Central, which would be um, one Pacific. So I'll be doing that there. And accessibility is a bit misleading in that term in that it's their learning tools, all their learning tools. Well, not all of them, but a lot of them. All right, take care, everybody. Have a good afternoon or morning or wherever you are. You're all different parts of the world. Bye-bye.